Appeal will be increased. If enemy missiles evade the SM-2s, there is the SeaWiz, or close-in weapon system. One of the most powerful and accurate rapid-fire guns in the U.S. military arsenal, the SeaWiz rate of fire is 50 rounds per second. Located on both port and starboard sides, the SeaWiz uses tungsten shells that can easily pierce the lightweight missile casing. Anti-ship warfare, Aegis cruisers are equipped with eight harpoon missiles fired from the stern. Working in concert with other ships and aircraft in the battle group, the crew can fire upon an enemy without actually seeing its target. the harpoon missile is will you uh, to avoid land or, or friendly ships and then to uh, engage the contact harpoons fly along the water and are able to avoid other ships and land obstacles en route to the target ship as it closes in on its target an onboard radar is activated and directs the missile to its impact point Against long-distance seaborne targets, the cruiser uses the Tomahawk anti-ship missile of 250 nautical miles. Tomahawk works off a satellite. For that reason, it's a non-real-time system. With the positional fix that we'll get on the enemy, we'll get an associated time, and the system will build a solution of future where it will be based on past positions. The TLAM looks exactly like the TASM and is fired from the same vertical launchers. Using terrain comparison radar for navigation, this Tomahawk variant is designed to attack land targets often at the request of ground forces. Its onboard computer compares a digital picture of the target with a live image feed from its camera for real-time precision targeting. This targeting system is called DSMAT for Digital Scene Matching Area Correlation. The TLAM can travel 700 miles to deliver its 1,000 pound payload. The missile can either airburst to destroy exposed targets or dispatch cluster munitions. Aboard the cruiser, the most visible weapons are the two 5-inch guns at the front and rear of the main deck. They are operated by a crew of six below deck. The small crew can reload the gun while firing on targets up to 13 miles away. The silent, unseen threat of enemy submarines remains a vital concern of naval operations. The Aegis can protect the battle group with ANSQS-53 hull-mounted sonar, the Tactus towed array sonar, and the LAMPS helicopter. Aegis cruisers extend the range of their submarine detection capability by using LAMPS Mark III Seahawk helicopters. by way of the LAMPS electronic detection system. They also use a magnetic anomaly detector, which can sense minute changes in the Earth's magnetic field caused by the presence of submarines. To further expand their ASW capabilities, the Seahawks are equipped with the acoustically guided Mark 46 light torpedo. Seahawks are rugged and durable. But flying the 10-ton aircraft from the small deck of the Aegis requires special skill on the part of both the aircrew and the ship. 
In poor weather, flight operations are a test of the equipment and the courage of the men and women involved. To make a landing in heavy seas, Aegis cruisers use a special winch to actually pull the helicopters aboard. To the outsider, the Aegis cruiser is a computerized weapons platform using the latest advances in technology. To those who serve on it, the ship is both home and office, where the captain and crew must live as well as work. To the crew, it's a drastically different way of life from the one they left behind. Work. Recreation. Meals and ceremonies. Piloting through hazardous waters. Preparing for combat over and over again until it becomes second nature. One such routine is general quarters, where the crew runs a gauntlet of drills to test and improve their readiness for a variety of shipboard emergencies. Fires, flooding, as well as chemical, biological, and radiological attack. In an actual situation, through fires or combat, our job is to maintain the ship's stability so it can perform its, its functions or its project, whatever it has to do to get through. Uh, if we have to do uh, major casualties, uh, firefighting, uh, flooding, uh, shoring type techniques, anything of that nature. To test the crew in damage control, a smoke generator simulates the effects of a fire and a strobe light its source. In no time, the ship's machine shop is filled with smoke and instructors take up their positions. It's announced that there's a fire in the engine room or the machine shop and general quarters begins. We man repair locker three, which is in the aft part of the ship closest to this, to this space. Uh, the team members uh, grab OBAs, you know, like I said, they may be scattered throughout the ship when something like this, since this was called, go to the locker, get their equipment, you've got uh, hosemen and stuff flanking the hoses out, you have boundary men going out, checking surrounding spaces, evacuating close spaces, uh, basically everybody's trying to get set up. Uh, you have a, a team leader, a nifty operator which uh, is a thermal imager, help you see in the smoke uh, field area to locate the fire to, to lead the fire team members, the two host team members, into the space and show them exactly where the fire is at and, and fight the fire. Two host teams will enter with the team leader. The team leader will point it, direct them to the fire, point it out, um, and they will go and, and put the fire out. Aegis duty also consists of manning equipment, mail call, flashing lights, and bridge watch. It's kind of tedious, you know, doing it in uh, repetition or so. But also, it's kind of fun, you know, being one of the guys and you get to know everybody. And, uh, of course, there's times when you miss your family and you think back, and uh, sometimes you're out and uh, you're not getting mail as you wish you were getting. Your morale drops a bit. And if you uh, kind of believe in what you're doing and just hope and will believe that you're out here for a reason, then you just <laughs> keep counting the days until you get back in. Commanding an Aegis cruiser requires a person with experience, patience, wisdom, and a sense of priorities. If one were to ask me what it felt like to uh, command an Aegis cruiser that some people have called the uh, most lethal weapon system that the Navy has today on the surface, uh, I would say that it's really not uh, the fact that it's a lethal weapon system. I would say more that it is the fact that you are given the opportunity to command people, uh, and that's what the Navy is all about. It's the opportunity to try a leadership style and get people to do what you want them to do. Uh, it's not the fact that uh, we can fire missiles out of 
our vertical launching systems or put uh, torpedoes in the water or launch helicopters off of our helo deck. It's the most formidable surface warship. With its advanced electronic monitoring systems, sophisticated weapons platform and well-trained crew, the Aegis cruiser is able to protect the battle group and unleash tremendous firepower against land, sea, and airborne threats.